Hello everyone, here is a video showing you some of the stuff that we covered on the training on the 29th. Um, this video is going to cover deleting rows and columns in a sheet, formatting rows and columns, uh, freezing rows to make a header, adding columns and rows and formulas such as uh, joining text, summarizing, uh, adding up, and um, creating averages. We'll also make some drop downs, contextual formatting and uh, sort some data and filter some data. So this video is going to contain all these. So it may be a bit lengthy, but at least you have a record of all this. All right, let's get started by deleting some rows and columns. I'm going to go into my practice sheet down here and notice that I have some sample data in here. We don't need all these other columns. So I'm going to click the first one which happens to be column H. And I'm going to hold down shift and click Z and then I'm going to right click on it and I'm just going to delete columns H through Z. I'm going to do the same thing with rows. I might leave some on the bottom um, but I'm going to take row 23 and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Sheets likes to give you a thousand rows right out the bat but I'm going to hold down shift and select 1000 and again, I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete rows 23 through 1000. So there we go. We have a nice looking spreadsheet without all those extra columns and rows. Next step is to format some rows and columns. I'm going to go back into my practice sheet here and I'm going to make this header row stand out just a little bit. So I'm going to click on the one for row one and now I'm going to apply some changes. I'm going to make the background this color and I'm going to make the text stand out a little bit by making it white. Now it's we're almost there. Uh, I think the text should be a little bit larger and I can change the font to something different. There we go. And with that I can even center all of these. Notice that some of the titles are um, stretching out and hard to read. One of the things that we can do is stretch out our columns so that they do fit everything that we need. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to actually make it just a little bit larger than 12. I'll go up to 14. There we go. That's looking great. The next thing I'm going to do is go to that header that I made and I want to freeze it to make it a an actual header. So I'm going to go over to my practice sheet. Here we are. If I scroll, if oh, well, let me add some. Oh, let's add a thousand. So if I was at the top here and I scroll, notice my header goes away. That's no good. So I actually have to make that an official header and I do that by selecting the row, going to view, freeze, and I'm going to freeze one row. Boom, right there. Now if I scroll, notice my header stays in place. The next thing we're going to do is figure out how to add some columns and rows. So I'm going to go back to my practice sheet here and let's say I want to add another row between last name and field trip permission. I can select a column, use this little drop down arrow there and I can insert a column to the left or to the right. In this case I'm going to insert a column to the left. There we go. I'm all ready to name it and put in some data. Same thing with rows. If I wanted to add a row I can select a row. I can right click on that row and now I can add a row above or below. And you can see that I can even delete, clear, and hide the row too. These are some extra settings that are very useful. Now we're going to get into some formulas. We're going to do some uh, join text formula right now. That's pretty simple and very useful. I'm going to hit the uh, practice sheet here and let's say I want to take the text that's in column A and join it with the text that's in B in its own column. In this example I have a full name column. So what I'm going to do is select the cell that I want to use and I'm going to start my formula by using the equal sign. I'm going to say that this cell is equal to what's in cell A2 and I'm going to use the AND symbol and I'm going to use a double quote space double quote because this will insert a space between the first and the last name. I'm going to use another AND and then I'm going to select the next cell B2. 
When I hit return, you see that it joins uh, the names in a proper formatting. From here, I can just drag this cell down and it'll do it for the rest of the rows. Pretty snappy, huh? The next formula we're going to go over is the sum formula. I'm going to go back into my practice sheet and let's see, um, I want to see how much field trip money that I've collected already. I can see that there are some empty cells in there. So what I'm going to do is select where I would like the answer and I'm going to put it right at the bottom and I'm going to go up to the formula or the, the formula or functions button and I'm going to select it and I'm going to hit the word sum right there. It's going to say, well, the sum of what? And I'm going to now pick the cells. I'm going to choose E2. I'm going to hold down Shift and then select E20. When I'm all done, I'm going to hit Return, and now we have a proper sum. The nice thing about using a formula is that if I do start entering more information, this will automatically total as I go. The next formula I'm going to show you is the formula for average, and it works in a very similar way to that of sum. Back in my practice sheet, I have a column here. I'm going to stretch this out so we can see it called testing score. Just arbitrary numbers, but let's say down here I wanted to have an average of these scores. What I'm going to do is select the cell where I want the answer, and I'm going to go back up to my functions or formula button, and I'm going to choose average. Right there, it's going to put in equals the average of what? Well, I'm going to select cell H2. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the cell H20. Again, this is going to select that whole range. And when I hit return, I get an average. Now, my average has a lot of decimal places. I can format this number by go selecting the cell, going to format, number. Right now, it's on automatic but I may want to select it as a number. And now it'll just give me two decimal points. I can have more control of that by formatting the number and choosing more formats, custom number format. And down here I have a lot of options. Another helpful skill is uh, being able to create drop down menus in a spreadsheet. In order to do this, I'm going to go to my practice sheet and right here, I'm going to make a yes, no drop down uh, option for these cells. So what I'm going to do is select the first cell available and I'm going to go to data, validation, and now I'm going to say that I want this to be a list of items and I have to enter these items separated by a comma. I'm going to put in yes, comma, no, because these are my two choices that I want to offer. After doing so, I'm going to hit save. And now you see that there's a little drop down button right here that I can choose to fill in. I can make sure that it has nothing or yes or no. In order to apply this to the rest of the cells, I'm simply going to grab the handlebar and drag this down. Now they all have a drop down menu. The next skill we're going to get into is conditional formatting. On my practice sheet here, you see I have a lot of yeses and noes in here. Let's say I wanted to be able to just quickly glance at these and get an idea for how many kids have turned in their field trip permission forms and how many have it. What I can do is select the top cell, which happens to be D2, and the bottom cell, which is D20. And hold down shift so I get them all. I'm going to apply some conditional formatting to these cells. So I'm going to go up to Format, Conditional Formatting, and I get a sidebar that pops up here. And I'm going to select this right here. Uh, format cell if, while well, the text is exactly, I know what I have in there. If, if, they, if the answer is, if the cell contains yes, I want it to be green. And I'm going to add a new rule, and if the cell text is exactly, and you can see there's a lot of options in there. You can do a lot of stuff with formatting. Well, in this case, if the text is no, let's make it, um, let's default it to uh, red. And I'm going to do one more. If the cell is empty, let's make it yellow because we're waiting on that. There we go. So I have these three uh, conditional formatting rules. 
and you can see right here that you know the, the no is red and the green is yes and if I um, delete this it should go yellow there we go yellow I'm waiting on Nadia Lee's and you can see as I go that um, the colors change based on the condition or the text within Now we're going to get into uh, sorting data. I'm going to delete my two rows off the bottom here so that I can sort them accurately. Um, let's say I want to sort by how many kids have uh, turned in their field trip permission form and how many haven't. What I can do is go to the column head right there, the title bar there, and I'm going to click on the drop down menu and I'm going to sort this A to Z. Now all my no's are on top. My yeses are together and my no, my I don't knows, I guess would be down at the bottom. I can do that the same with age. Let's say I want to put the oldest kid at the top. I use that drop down menu and I sorted Z to A. So now I have Francis at the top and my youngest, which is Jenny at the bottom. I can also sort by last name. Right there, I can go A to Z or just as easily Z to A. Again, by test score, I can select that little drop down menu and let's see who had the lowest, little Nadia Lee, and who was the highest, Teddy Voigt. So, sorting um, data is very easy in Google Sheets. The last thing we're going to go over is filtering data. Filtering data is a lot like, uh, well, like a coffee filter, it lets some things through the water and keep some things out, the coffee grounds. So in my practice sheet, let's say I want to filter this data to just look for certain aged kids. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go to my filter button right there. And I'm going to select the little, right in the column header where it says age, there's a blue drop down menu. When I select that, if I just want to find all, all 10, I'm going to clear all my values and just choose the 10. Then I'm going to click OK, and now I see just my 10-year-olds. I can also adjust that by saying, well, show me my 9 and 10-year-olds. And there we go. And I imagine that I can even uh, sort these by 9-year-olds on top, 10-year-olds on bottom. Very, very helpful skill. In order to get out of this, I'm just going to turn off the filter by clicking the filter button, and now I'm back to normal. Let's say I wanted to actually create a filter that I want to save and use over and over and over. For example, just show me the nose right there. So what I'm going to do is click just to the right of the filter views and get my drop down menu and I'm going to create a new filter view. Now I'm going to go over to my field trip permission column, use the blue drop down menu. I'm going to clear all choices and just show me the nose. When I do that, of course I get all the no's and I'm going to name it no's or whatever you would want to name it. When I'm all done, I can get out of this filter view by clicking on the X. To show that I can quickly go back there, I'm going to click on the filter views uh, drop down and you see that my filter view I made, no's, is right there. So I can click it and go right back to my no's. And if I turn on some of these as yeses, get out of my view and come back to it, you're going to see that it's dynamic, it has changed, and now I still just have these two that are no's. So filtering, filtering data is very wonderful. Just like sorting data, filtering is fantastic also. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.